What's up you guys? I'm Lauren from tastebetterfromscratch.com and today we're making apple pie. So there are three essential components to making the best apple pie. It needs a buttery flaky pie crust. The filling needs to be really flavorful and it has to hold together and not fall into a soupy puddle when you cut into it. So let me show you how to make that magic happen. I have already whipped together my all-time favorite Easy Pie Crust recipe, which makes two crusts perfect for this apple pie recipe. I'm gonna show you how to roll out the top for the lattice crust, but first, let's make the apple pie filling. We're using six large apples for this recipe, and we're going to slice, core, and peel them. And I like to use this Johnny Apple Peeler because it does all those things at once. So I've chosen Honeycrisp apples and Granny Smith, so we get a little bit of the mixture of sweet and tart, perfect for baking. Now that I have all of my apples peeled and cored and sliced, these are sliced pretty thin. I cut them into thirds, however small you want your apple pieces. You could even do these into chunks, like small chunks if you want. We're gonna add them to a mixing bowl. Grab your sliced apples and spices, and we are gonna cook this filling a little bit on the stove before we add it to our pie crust. To make our cinnamon sugar mixture that's going to give flavor to these apples, we've got 3 fourths cup of sugar, and then we have some cinnamon, allspice, nutmeg, cloves, and salt. So we're gonna mix those together. Then grab a large pan over medium heat. We're gonna add a couple tablespoons of butter. Once the butter's melted, add the apples and then sprinkle that cinnamon sugar on top and we're gonna cook this for about five minutes. Now you can see the apples have softened a little bit. So now we're gonna add our thickening agent. This is what's gonna help our pie really hold together when we cut it. We are going to add two tablespoons of flour and two teaspoons of cornstarch. So just sprinkle it over the top of the apples and mix it in really well. Now I'm going to squeeze one tablespoon of lemon juice over the top just to keep the apples from browning. And then we're gonna set this aside while we roll out our pie crusts. Now we're gonna let our apple pie filling set aside to cool off while we roll out our top crust. So I've got my awesome homemade pie crust recipe I'm gonna to link to. And the way I like to roll it out that makes it super easy um, when doing a lattice crust or a top crust, I have a barely damp towel I'm gonna to put down and then a piece of parchment paper on top with a little bit of flour to help keep it from sticking. You want a nice chilled pie crust. Okay, a little bit of flour on top so my rolling pin doesn't stick. We're gonna roll this out into a big circle at least one to two inches larger than the diameter of your pie tin. Make sure it's in a smooth, even layer that everything's even in thickness. So you can add this whole crust to the top of your pie or you can cut it into strips to make a pretty lattice top, which is what I'm going to do. I'm gonna do them kind of thick so I don't have so many pieces to work with. I like them a few inches thick. I usually start with one clean line on the edge and then I do them a couple inches. Okay, we're ready to fill our pie and then we'll add this lattice crust on top. Okay, I have placed one pie crust in my pie dish and it's nice and cold. I've trimmed the edges so that it has an even overhang of about an inch. Now we're gonna add our apple pie filling. And just spread it into an even layer. Make sure to fill in the edges so there's no gaps along the edges where you're gonna cut and serve your pie. Now we're gonna add our lattice topping. You don't need to be intimidated by this. It's pretty easy. And if you don't wanna do the over under pattern, you could just lay strips one way and strips the other way like my mom does. Whatever you wanna do works. What I do is I start with the longest strip of pie dough. We place that just off center on the pie. Okay, so now to lay the pieces in the other direction, you're gonna fold back every other piece. Lay down your next strip. Place those back. And then start at the other end and fold back the pieces you didn't fold back the first time. So we're just making an over under pattern. So if you get confused, just look at what you're laying down and make sure it goes over under over under. You can really have fun with this part. I like to trim the edges around the pie. I just use scissors so that everything is the same length. And then you can use any of these extra pieces. If there's a spot that you feel like is kind of shorter or missing, you can squeeze it together, make that look nice. 
Okay, now take the outside border of your crust. We're gonna kind of pinch everything together. I like to lift it up and kind of fold it behind to create a nice, thick, uniform crust all the way around the pie. Pinch the top crust and the bottom crust together. Fold them over gently so you don't see that back edge to create a nice, even, uniform edge all the way around the pie. And again, if you come across any pieces of the pie crust that are really thin, you can add some of that extra dough. Just, just peel a piece off and stick it to the back to make a nice, even, uniform edge. Now we're gonna crimp the edges of the pie. Put your index fingers together straight. Push your thumb to gently crimp the edges of the pie. I like to do them pretty close together. It looks really pretty. All right, the very last step is to brush the top of the pie lightly with an egg wash, which is just one whole egg or an egg white mixed with a little bit of milk and water. It's gonna get it that beautiful kind of shine, glossy look and make it nice and golden. And the final touch is just a light sprinkle of sugar over the crust. We're ready to put the pie in the oven at 425 degrees for about 20 minutes. Then we'll lower the temperature to 375 and cook it for another 30 to 40 minutes. Look how beautiful this looks. I wish you guys could smell how amazing it smells. Make sure to let it cool for several hours once it comes out of the oven so that it holds together when you slice it. Yes perfectly cooked apples. Smells amazing. Look how beautiful that is. This pie had the perfect combination of flavors, the buttery flaky pie crust, the spices, the tender apples, which give it just the perfect amount of sweetness. I hope you guys love this pie as much as I do. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to my channel for more recipes that taste better from scratch.